Back in 2011, I took my family to Bay City, Michigan, and while there, I showed my kids the huge rudder in the park where the Davidson Shipyard once operated. I explained to them how it worked and told them what vessel it was from. Then we went to the riverside, and I pointed out the remains of the Shenandoah's rudder, just jutting up out of the water and laying against her wrecked hull. I told them about the fleet of wooden vessels that had been abandoned and later burned along the river. Later that day, we took a tour cruise aboard the Princess Winona, up and down the river. It was a fine, relaxing summer day, and as we approached the mouth of the river, my seven-year-old daughter began to shout excitedly and point toward the east shore. Look, Daddy, look! There's a shipwreck right there! Look! There's a shipwreck right over there! I looked to where she was pointing, and there stood the telltale rudder post of one of James Davidson's giant wooden lake freighters. Her sharp eye had spotted what has been so often overlooked. It was the resting place of the pet coal. On Wednesday afternoon, April 27, 1898, at the Davidson Yard, the 295-foot-long Amazonas was launched. She was the first of a flurry of huge wooden vessels turned out by that yard in the opening of the 1898 navigation season. Just three days later, on the following Saturday afternoon, Captain Davidson's crew would launch the Amazonas's twin, the Orinoco. These big oak steamers featured a sleek spoon-shaped stern that was clearly different from the rounded stern of earlier wooden vessels. Additionally, the Amazonas-class Davidson vessels had no poop deck overhang or supports. Plus, they also had a standard rounded pilot house. And in another act of conformity, they had modern fluke anchors and hosepipes. The Amazonas worked hard for Captain Davidson, primarily hauling grain for his fleet until 1916. It was then that she was purchased by the Richland Steamship Company of Cleveland. They renamed her Richland Queen. Then in 1923, the interests of Peterson and Coling of Cleveland bought the boat. They renamed her Pet Coal, which was a combination of her owner's names. Pet for Peterson, Coal for Coling. She began hauling bulk cargoes for the Etna Portland Cement Company, and often tied up at their dock in Essexville, north of Bay City. The onset of the Great Depression saw the companies who owned the boat evaporate. The pet coal was abandoned where she had last docked on the Saginaw River, and she was left to rot. The serial arsonist who worked the river soon got around to her, and she was burned to the waterline. Eventually, her hulk was filled with stone and used as a sort of makeshift dock for a while. Eventually, she was overgrown and forgotten. If you look closely, you can see her remains when the water in the river is low. Or, if you have a sharp-eyed seven-year-old with you, it's likely that you can spot her telltale rudder post from the river itself. You never know what you can spot from the Princess Winona on a cruise. You just have to know where to carefully look.